Good morning, everybody. We're in Warrens, Wisconsin. Just delivered our load of lumber and we're headed over to Owatonna, Minnesota to pick up some glass that we got to take to British Columbia, Canada on the west coast. It's a nice little town. Wisconsin's actually got quite a bit of awesome little small towns. Last month in December, when I uh, delivered that load up into northeastern Wisconsin, I went through so many little towns. There's tons and tons of them, all very well maintained, well kept. Nice places to see. And you know, it's it's rare, I guess, that people would visit there because there's not really a lot of reason to go out there unless you live there or if you're delivering freight to the area. So that's one good thing about this job is I get to see a lot of little towns and stuff that I don't want to say are forgotten, but are sort of missed by a lot of people because they're off the main routes. pumps are frozen here. I was lucky enough to be able to uh, bobtail here to Pilot Flying J to get fuel while they load my trailer. The pumps are pumping really slow too. I don't think they're used to this cold weather here. It's about minus 25 I think. It's supposed to go down to about minus 30. That's in Celsius but it's, it's around about the same. Both Celsius and Fahrenheit meet at minus 40. I'm really hoping that by the time I'm done fueling that this guy will have left. Looks like he's been here for quite a while already. Everybody else that's been waiting, or that parked in front of the pumps and went inside, they've all left already a long time ago. He's still sitting here. I don't know why it's taking him so long. Probably takes a little while to take a shower sometimes, I guess. Yeah, the reason I bobtailed here while they loaded the trailer there, I just dropped the trailer there. They're actually not going to start loading me for a couple of hours yet. But I asked them if I could just drop the trailer and go out here and fuel because I was below a quarter tank. And with temperatures being this cold, I don't want my tanks to be empty of fuel. You have to keep them full of fuel. And I also had to put some anti-gel in there as well so that I don't end up with gelled fuel. Because I don't know if I'll be able to leave there tonight yet. If I'm only getting, if they're only, only going to start on me in a couple of hours, then they got to load it. Then I got to tie it down. Then I got to tarp it. I might not even get out of there at all. I may have to stay there the night and leave in the morning. So I dropped the trailer and I bobtailed out to the nearest Flying J and uh, get my fuel now just to make sure. You know, I don't mess around with Mother Nature. I've said this before, I don't mess around with that. Yep, it's cold. The good thing about where I'm loading though is I get a tarp it indoors in a heated building. 
Oh man, I couldn't imagine tarping in this weather. I mean, I could imagine it because I have to do it sometimes. This guy still hasn't moved. I wonder if he's gonna move. I guess we'll just wait. You can see how dirty my windshield is. He turned his lights on now, so I know he's sitting in his driver's seat. He just doesn't want to go. Is he gonna go or what? I'm gonna go out there and talk to him. This way, I don't know if you can see those two vehicles just off to the right. No, pardon me, just off to the left. I don't even know my directions. <laughs> Around to this side. Apparently, I can park my whole unit, truck and trailer, in the garage here. So I don't have to unhook. The other building where I have to go, where I go to usually, uh, there I have to unhook my trailer because I can't fit everything inside the building. And of course, we want to close the doors because it's minus 30 outside. Nobody wants to freeze inside, and I want to tarp my load in a nice, warm environment. So here, apparently it's a little bigger. I'm curious, I've never been to this side. Oh, I see, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, there he is, he just turned his lights off. Oh, is it gonna be in that building? Oh, fancy. That one's straight ahead of us there. Where'd he go? Where do you want me to go, bud? I, just, I see you're just parked here. I have no idea where I'm going. This is awesome, actually. There's just one door here. Just mine. And then I guess this is my load around here somewhere. So what this means, since I'm the only one here and there's no other doors or bays where other drivers are loading their freight, that means no other drivers opening and closing overhead doors to get in and out, right? On the other side, there's what, 10 doors all the way across, and whenever a driver's finished, they open up the overhead door and they have to go out, right? Or they back a trailer in, and uh, every time that happens, all the cold air rushes in and all the hot air rushes out, and you're always freezing while you're tarping, right? Here, I'm guaranteed to have a nice, warm bay, all by myself, to tie down and tarp this load. I wonder if I can request to always be loaded here? I feel so special. Well, this is probably the slowest it's ever been at this place. It's, it's always a little slow. Usually I always say it's about six to eight hours to get loaded here. Um, but today, it's been seven hours since I checked in here and they haven't even started. They did get me inside, which I appreciate, it's nice but they haven't even started loading me yet. I believe we give them four hours free here. And after four hours, we start charging them for uh, detention pay, that's what they, they call it. I don't know exactly how that works. Usually they get me loaded within the four hours at least, or close to it. And then I just have to tie it down and tarp it, which takes an extra two hours. It's now midnight. In another three hours, 
My logbook will be reset. That's how long we've been here. And I can start a new day. I stayed awake this whole time because I keep thinking that they're going to start. Now they're finally on my trailer. They're finally putting the first piece on just now. Seven hours later. I should have slept. I should have just gone to bed. But instead I was messing around on Facebook posting memes. It, it was it was worth it. It was pretty funny. <laughs> But still, what am I going to do now? Like, I'm, It's going to be very difficult to make it to my appointment. If I go to bed right now and sleep for the next three hours while they load me, because it's going to take them at least two to three hours for them just to load me, then I have to tie it down, then I have to tarp it. I'm not going to have enough energy to start my day. I'm going to have to go to bed and then sleep till like one in the afternoon tomorrow just so that I have a good rest. It's going to be very difficult to get to British Columbia for Monday morning at 7 a.m. Even though I do gain two hours going west, because I go two time zones over there, which means I gain two hours, I was just hoping to have a little bit more of a relaxed drive, but I might not even be able to make it on time for my appointment. I might have to call them and be like, yeah, well, it took them literally half a day to load me, so I'm gonna be a little late. Nothing I can do about it, right? Maybe instead of unloading me at 7 a.m., they can unload me at noon or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Lost satellite reception. Well, you don't say. That just happened now? What happened to you? What are you talking to me now? I'm not grumpy yet, but I'm sort of getting to the point where I'm getting a little bit irritated. But there's nothing I can do about it, so I, I probably shouldn't dwell on those feelings. It's just how she goes. I'm a truck driver. This is life. This is my life. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Just before I filmed these clips for you, I went out there again and uh, at the seven hour mark, I went out there and I uh, asked around a little bit. I don't want to irritate these guys. I don't want to give them any excuse to do a slack job on my load or not to do their best. I don't want them not to like me. But I just wanted to know, I'm like, hey, uh, did they forget about me? I've never had to wait this long. Uh, is everything okay? But apparently it's been really busy today. They're short staffed, you know, all the usual responses and excuses. And I just said, well, you know what? I don't blame you for that. It's fine. I just want to remind you that I'm here and that I've been here for seven hours. What else can I do, right? I don't want to get mad, that doesn't help anything. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. The time is 3 a.m. Got here at five o'clock yesterday, so that would be 10 hours I took them to load me. I've already got the straps on the front ones here. I just finished putting them over the back. I uh, started to put a few more on yet, but they just finally banded up this last bundle and they're finally done. 10 hours later. So I've got to tarp the thing yet and uh, go from here. So you know what's funny? According to my logbook, I can start my day now. 12 hours later now, when I picked up my paperwork on the way out, it was ex almost exactly 11 and a half hours since I got here. That is a new record. Let the record state, I was at the chipper for 11 and a half hours. If I wanted to right now, because I was off duty for all the, right when I, when I got here, I dropped the trailer, and I, or I parked the truck and trailer in the, in the garage there, and since then it's been over 10 hours that I haven't had to do anything. Technically, I could go, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Technically, I was on duty when I was uh, strapping and tarping there. And there we go, folks. This is what 11 and a half hours looks like. <laughs> uh, it was actually pretty quick to tarp it and tie it down because it's all pretty much the same size, same height. I, th I think it turned out pretty well. I'm happy with it. So guys, don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to start our three-day journey 
to the west coast. We gotta deliver this to British Columbia, Canada.